Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at the House of the Dead on the Nintendo Switch. This, it's the arcade classic that anyone around my age will most likely know. It was the crown jewel of any arcade in the late 90s, but how does it stand up in 2022 and does this release pay respect to the source? Well hit subscribe and join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. The story is honestly minimal, the game is broken down into four chapters and each opens and closes with a smaller cutscene. Here though an insane abductor plans to mobilise his armies of the undead against the world. You will be standing in his way as either Thomas Rogan or G and you are dispatched to take him down at a creepy old mansion. Along the way as well then save Sophie Rogan's future wife. It's not the smartest of stories, let's face it, but the delivery, I love it. It's cheesy, it's B-movie-esque, it's funny when it shouldn't be, and that is half the charm in the House of the Dead. Some of these characters have all of the emotional range of a plank of wood, and I would not have it any other way. Most importantly though, they've definitely stayed true to the source. Gameplay wise then, for those that don't know which will no doubt be few given the fact you're watching this video, The House of the Dead is a light gun game meaning it had an accessory gun to take down zombie enemies on screen. With the advances in technology, this really no longer works, sadly it relied on a good old CRT setup so now we are turning to the Switch in the hopes gyro controls can be a replacement. So that leads us to the control options and gyro can be your go-to or a combination of stick input and then using a gyro for fine tuning. I tested this one on the Pro Controller and the Joy-Con directly. The Pro Controller I would avoid, it lacked the accuracy and it seemed the tracking struggled frequently. Joy-Con, it works somewhat but it's nowhere near the accuracy anyone who played the original would want. Now realistically I want to be fair here, we are talking about a limitation of the hardware directly over anything else. The Joy-Con or Pro Controller, it just doesn't have the ability to keep up with the gameplay and you'll also notice a few major things. The calibration will be lost frequently, you'll be tapping the Y button constantly to recalibrate it and then there's also noticeable lag on screen. The alternative then obviously works, control of the reticle on screen with a stick, but that sucks the fun out of the experience. This all leads then to another problem, which is trying to overcome this game on hard or arcade mode, that will be an absolute chore. I did some tweaking in the options at least, where I was able to fine tune the gyro just enough to be an assist, but I kept away from standalone. Another thing I also noticed, using a Joy-Con it's so small, it weighs so little, you pull the trigger or press a button, naturally you move, this needs the weight a gun accessory provides, allowing you to keep that accuracy and speed needed together in unison while you're pushing that fire button. Fortunately though when it comes to the difficulty and overcoming the input barriers, this one definitely has some nice assists, in fact it might be the most accessible entry ever. These options you can find things like automatic reloads as well as a variety of levels set around aim assist. I also then really miss shooting off screen to reload on that note, that always felt intuitive here you'll be tapping the B button each and every time you need that next clip. You do forget though the challenge of these games pack though, I threw it on arcade mode and got absolutely destroyed and the core experience here itself, it's absolutely respectable, it's often a one for one remake. Like Panzer Dragoon from Forever Entertainment, it's clearly passion driving these teams and you can see that in their commitment you know, to the design for its core mode. Expect though a ton of enemies throughout with a decent variety and then some epic scale of boss moments. During the chapters then as well, apart from of course shooting zombies to bits, you'll want to shoot crates and interactable objects. There's not only multiple pathways in this game and endings to find, but also then pickups. Think health packs for example, these will be essential and you'll even be saving scientists then along the way who often have gifts for you. You'll start each game though no matter the difficulty with 3 health bars, but this can be maxed out at 5 and that is going to be a great place to get to. 
The game is then accompanied with Horde mode and this, it's the same game layout, chapter 1 through 4, but now they've added minor tweaks at each section. They've also then thrown in, or at least as the press material state, 15 times the zombies. Now like the name suggests, it's intense, they are designed to overwhelm you. Still packs multiple difficulty options as well, but you can absolutely feel the dial up in enemy counts. Both of these modes then contain classic scoring and a new modern variation. It also packs in local leaderboards. The classic scoring though, it's based on the arcade game each kill and basically dials up that ticker. Modern though, it's actually challenging you to kill quicker because it's a combo system. So let's say you kill five zombies in one go, expect a healthy point multiplayer. The game then also packs in local multiplayer that can be two players working together or even score attacks. So you're competing to run up the highest score. Outside of that then we get a gallery that houses 3D models of each enemy type, there's an armory for weapons and you'll be able to after the first completion choose between the two playable characters that adds some you know minor tweaks to the plot points. It's a shame though this one is stumbling because of the hardware it's now needing to work with in 2022, hopefully this leads to some sort of better accessory as no doubt fans they won't mind parting with some extra cash to get that accessibility. There's even a patch expected for gameplay soon that should introduce cowboy mode and that will be dual wielding pistols as you hold to Joy-Con. Graphically then, I think it's a nice upgrade visually. Again, as I said, they respected the source material and pulled it into 2022. The graphics, they are preset on launching the game to performance mode. That drops the image quality, but provides the highest possible frame rate. I actually ended up jumping between the two frequently, and you can do this mid game at any point. It is in the options, it will give you a nice idea. It is though definitely noticeable. I did feel though at times even though the graphical improvement is there it almost had a plastic look when performance mode was off. The shadow work as well it was for sure maybe a little heavy at points but it was definitely entertaining to view both ways and I've demonstrated both in today's video. The performance mode though had the very very occasional stutter. This was a little more apparent with the visuals dialed up but still far from bad. The visual highlight has to be the damage on enemies though, limbs falling away, skin peeling off, it's nice and over the top, that is exactly what I wanted. It's particularly true for the boss encounters where some of the animations, they definitely stand up to this day. I noticed on cutscenes then some minor popping in the background but generally really like it visually a lot and the menus are particularly in keeping with the House of the Dead name. My final point on visuals then, there's no option in here to play with the original graphics for the purists out there that are looking for that experience. Sadly, this is a complete rebuild and not simply using that original shell. Audio finally, and here we see the original soundtrack and the voiceover work removed. There is no way to include this in the game. The audio contained is still good stuff, though it's influenced by the original, and it seems it comes down to lack of access, which no doubt means a licensing issue. The voice work especially is in keeping with the original, you know, it's over the top, and as Forever Entertainment put it, it is purposely bad. That's the charm though, so you know they absolutely get what you want from this game. The guns sound weighty though and as you would expect, zombies exploding is a satisfying reward for your gunplay. So the final verdict and sadly I've enjoyed the majority of this package but the key element is missing, you know, gameplay, a light gun of some sort and yeah there's really no alternative available. To me they've done what they can with what they have but the IR in these setups it's always a laggy and lacks the ability to stay comfortably calibrated. My suggestion if you are going to pick this up play with a combo and use gyro for micro adjustments. The problem then though is the game packs all of these difficulty options which are going to be out of reach for most. The speed will not be there with the cursor movement and the accuracy won't be there using gyro. If anything the only thing I see it leading to in fact is frustration. Then you look at the rest of the package though and the care is clear. You know we get strong audio, graphics and design all in keeping with the original. Sadly though this is a hard one to recommend to anyone outside of you know the most diehard of fans. It just lacks the fun and the intensity that you expect with the House of the Dead name and that's a shame because honestly you'll play this, you'll see the effort and all the design work and everything else and then you'll be let down by the gameplay that just isn't all that fun. 
This is the House of the Dead, though a game I love, so I hate to do it today, but an average 5 out of 10. I'm thinking if you're willing to put up with a less involved cursor and stick style of gameplay, then maybe take a look. This, though, it's the House of the Dead with a massive compromise around its key gameplay mechanic. They seem to have done what they could with the idea, but unfortunately, you know, Gyro just doesn't quite cut it. They were so close though with this one, everything else is pretty much in place in my eyes. Will you be adding this one to the library then or holding on to that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner. It helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch. As much as we all do here, join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.